Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss how to find the number of threads and thread states in a Java process. Well, thread is the basic unit of concurrency in Java and throughput of an application increases when multiple threads are running in parallel. But after a certain time, increasing the number of threads also could cause a problem, you know, uh, which might result in high memory usage, thereby throwing OOM exception, that is out of memory exception, right? And there could be a lot of threat context switching when we are uh, dealing with multiple threads, which obviously degrades the performance of the application, right? So a good start point in troubleshooting such issues is to monitor the number of threads and their state. And how do we do that? That we are going to see now. Using graphical Java monitoring tools. So the simplest way to see the number of threads in Java is to use the GUI tools, right? Graphical user interface tools. So one of such kind is Java Visual VM, which comes as a package within the JDK. If you're using JDK 8 or below, right? So how do we actually get this tool launch? So I'll show you that now. Go to your installation of Java, program files Java. You see the JDK here, right? So in, into the bin folder, right? So search for J Visual VM. This is what Java Visual VM is. This is the executable, just double click on that so that, you know, the Java Visual VM tool gets open, right? You see the tool here and, you know, you see a local node here, right? So all the Java process or the Java applications running on this local machine will be displayed under this node. So it actually takes a bit of time, maybe a one, one minute or so. So we just need to wait for that. All right, you can see the applications here, right? So idea, local applications, even the visual VM, which we opened, all these applications got displayed under this node local. So all these are the applications running on my local machine, right? So you can see idea here, right? So you see IntelliJ ID, ID here, right? So that application got listed as it was written in Java, right? So once I double click on this application, you see something on the right side, right? So Let's actually see that what it is. If I click on this overview, so you can see, uh, right, the JVM arguments here. And when I click on this monitor, we can see the CPU statistics here, right? CPU usage. And on to the right, right? So you can see heap, perm gen. So these statistics according to the time, right? We can also see classes, threads, right? So this is how we can monitor all of this. And in specific, we wanted to uh, know the number of threads and their state. So in that case, just click on this threads tab. Then you see the live threads here. There are 44 threads in it. And out of them, like daemon threads are like 31. Daemon thread is a thread which is running in the backend, right? You see the num name of each thread here and we can see the colors here, right? Which actually represent the state of the thread. Green representing the running thread you know, uh, yellow representing the thread which is waiting and so on. You can see the running time as well, total time and the running time of each thread here. And you, you see a thread dump here. So if you click on that, you get a thread dump and that will be displayed under the application here. You can see that here. So this is how you can even get the thread dump, which actually gives you the thread state of uh, each thread, right? And going back to threads again, click on this sampler. You, you can actually get the CPU sample sampling here, right? So uh, just click on the CPU. You see the CPU samples here. And if you click on memory, we can actually see the memory sampling also, right? So you see uh, all the class names here of the application and how many bytes it allocated, number of instances, and so on, right? So if you wanted to take a snapshot, snapshot is like a, a particular instance of time, you get all the statistics, right? So just click on the snapshot. Again, that will be, you know, displayed here. So maybe I clicked uh, twice, so I got two snapshots here. So 
that's how you can take the snapshots and you can analyze like each thread how many bytes it, uh, it's actually allocated uh, how what are the number of instances and so on right and yeah he you can take the heap thread dump as well that uh, we have already looked into right so uh, this is a pretty much good tool which we can actually uh, use to you know monitor the number of threads you know their states and whatnot and you know this is how we can actually uh, use this tool you see the remote option here right so uh, till now what we discussed all the applications which are running on my local machine what if my server is running on some remote machine some linux machine unix machine so in that case you can click on remote so provide the host name port and then you know uh, connect to your remote machine then all the java applications running on your remote machine get displayed under this remote node so this is all about uh, java visual vm tool so let's go back so as i already said so if you are using java 8 or below version then you have this option of uh, ex java visual vm executable available in jdk pack right so if you are using java 9 or newer version then you need to navigate to this url visualvm.github.io where you can download the visual vm application and install it on your machine it comes as a standalone application so that's all about uh, java visual vm so there are many other tools like that so j profiler your kit netbeans profiler all these are the other you know java monitoring tools which we can use to find the thread information all right so in some cases we wanted to uh, know the information of the number of threads within the application itself example if we wanted to display the thread states uh, on the monitoring dashboards or if you wanted to print them in the logs so in such cases we wanted to uh, you know get the information of the threads within the application itself when we are writing the application itself so that can be done using the java apis i am going to show you that now how we are going to get the thread information using the Java APIs. So thread class dot active count is a method which uses the active count or the count of the threads, right? So it returns, I think it returns integer as it's a count. You see it is returning integer. So let's see what will be the number of threads of this application. These are the number of threads. So let's put it as number of threads. Thread is a class, active count is the method which actually gives the count of the threads, number of threads. So number of threads, you know, of uh, this application or of this program at least, right? So are two number of threads. But if you actually observe that, uh, in any other tool, it, it will be more than this number. This is because active count only gives the number of threads within the thread group. So Java actually divides all the threads into groups for easier management. So active count method gives only the number of threads within that thread group. And how do I know that which thread group, uh, I, uh, what is the thread group name, right? So for that thread dot, get current thread so thread dot current thread dot i need the thread group i need the thread group name what's the current thread group uh, name right This is the thread group name. So this is how we get the thread group name. Thread dot current thread is a method dot get thread group name. Thread get thread group is a method dot get name. So these are the APIs available uh, within you know Java, which actually gives us the active count within uh, the threads within the thread group. And you see the thread group name, right? So this is the main group. Main is the name of this thread group and 
if i wanted to get like uh, you know all the threads irrespective of the groups right so all the groups i want the collective count of all the threads for uh, you know summing up of all the threads within all the groups right so how do you get that so for that we have another api called manager management factory dot get thread mxb dot get thread count is the api which we need to use to get the count of all the threads uh, summed up on all the thread groups right so we can just say i'll just say complete thread count Okay, I think I missed the close brace. Yeah, you can see the complete thread count is six. So this actually differs with the first one, active count, right? So this actually proves that uh, the active count only gives the number of threads within the thread group. Whereas if you wanted to get the complete thread count uh, across all the thread groups, then we need to use this API management factory, right? So this is how we, uh, the Java APIs are handy if you wanted to use this uh, within the application, right? All right. So if you observe, like uh, using the uh, GUI tools, right? Graphical user interface tools might have some minor impact on the application performance. So those are not recommended on the production environments. So then what's next so we can use the command line tools to actually get the thread info following are the commands which we can use to get the information on the threads so we have a command called jstack so you see the syntax jstack and uh, the optional parameters then we provide the process id so this is the example of it jstack 17264 is the process id sample uh, example and you can even write uh, the you know uh, thread dump into a file so this is how you actually uh, jstack actually gets the thread dump of that process and writes it into a file called thread dump.txt so there is another command command called jcmd you see jcmd uh, provide the process id and thread dot print actually prints the uh, you know thread dump uh, on the st uh, standard output console we have another tool, command line tool called Alibaba Arthas. So it comes as a jar file. So we can download the jar file and run it from the command line. So you just need to run this jar file and then maybe you just give hyphen H help, then all the list of available commands will be displayed. So these are the command line tools which are available to actually get the thread dump and know more information on the threads of the Java process. There are direct Linux commands as well. So you don't even need to go for the other commands. So there are some Linux, basic Linux commands as well, where we can actually uh, use uh, and get the information on the threads. So top is one command, which actually lists all the processes running on the machine. And uh, if we actually provide a minus H, so it displays every thread in the process, right? Or, or else uh, it actually gives you uh, uh, the overall stats for that process. Uh, when we provide minus H, it displays uh, every thread in the process. And minus P, P filters the output by process ID. One is the actual process ID. Now you can see that, right? When you run it, so the sample has been displayed here. You can see the first column gives you the thread ID and you can see the percentage of CPU and percentage of the memory utilization as well in, the, in this picture. And you know, there is another command called PS, so which actually lists all the process and minus T is used to list all the process started by the application. And this this is how the output will be displayed. So being the first, uh, you know, first column uh, displays the process ID and the second column, you see the that lists the thread ID of the, uh, you know, thread ID actually of that thread in Linux. So these are the basic Linux commands which you can use it to know the information on the threads running for the particular Java process. So in this video, like uh, we started uh, learning what will be the you know common issues with while using multi-threading. 
and you know before you even resolving those issues we need to know like uh, uh, which thread is running long or uh, you know uh, what will be the, what is the root cause of uh, oom exception all this for that we need to actually monitor the threads and the thread state and to know uh, and to do that so there are different ways that's what we have seen so we have seen graphical monitoring tools we have seen java apis we have seen you know command line tools and also the basic linux commands so that's all for this video thanks for watching